It's my pleasure to introduce Beef and Lamb's new CEO, Sam Carter. Good afternoon, everyone. I must say, uh, sitting beside William Morrison, I feel a little bit underdressed. Not wearing a tie, but I trust you'll forgive me for my slightly casual attire. Um, listen, thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, for me, it's great to be back in the sheep and beef sector, uh, dealing with uh, subject matter and, and products that I'm passionate about. Um, firstly, though, just my apologies um, that I've not been able to spend the whole day with you. On uh, Monday, my wife had a reasonably major operation. I'm pleased to say that uh, it's been successful, but it's requiring a bit of my intense support at the moment. If you want to look at innovation, um, look at keyhole surgery. So three hours of surgery, uh, four small holes, less than 100 mils of blood lost. That to me is a, is a great innovation. Um, given that today is about ag innovation, I want to spend my brief time on exactly that. Quickly transversing a definition, and I'm sure you've had a few of these um, today, examining productivity challenges for our industry, assessing some of beef and lamb's challenges and, and responses, and finally outlining some of the remaining mountains that we've got to climb. Innovation is a word that's um, bandied about incessantly. To put us all in the same paddock, I've got this out of a business dictionary and reckon it fits our context nicely. Right. So, uh, so what's the definition that I've got up there of, of innovation? The process of translating an idea or invention into a good or service that creates value for which customers will pay. To be called an innovation, an idea must be re replicable, replicable at an economical cost and must satisfy a specific need. So some key words there. An idea or invention, a service creating value, people willing to pay, applied at an economical cost to satisfy a need. Or in short, um, a good idea you can apply and make money out of. So why is innovation needed? From a farm business perspective and, a, and an industry perspective, it's often said that we need to achieve productivity improvement of 3% per year. Sounds like a stiff target. And indeed, our, uh, our officer of New Zealand, of the New Zealand Order of Merit, resident economist Rob Davison, he calculated in a split second that it's increasing output by 50% in 15 years, or doubling it in 23 years. Now, low inflation and interest rates might take the heat off that 3% annual figure at present, but nonetheless, it indicates that we need to keep the foot firmly on the productivity throttle. So back to innovation. Roughly speaking, innovation fits into two buckets. In farming terms, we can look at it like this. Improving the current or incremental, good old incremental growth. So this might be upping the lambing percentage a bit, improving growth rates, increasing pasture production by 10% by improving pea levels. You can go on. Or secondly, a transformational activity that uh, generates a stepwise change in output. Maybe different products targeting different customers through new business models. A classic example we can use here is where we have an unirrigated dryland property, which is probably most of them in the North Island too at the moment, but uh, an unirrigated dryland property running a breeding operation, selling store lands before the dry. Transform this to becoming a fully irrigated property with high volume forages targeted to fast growing finishing animals. So that's what we talk about in terms of transformation. Now, none of what I've mentioned today is, is new ideas, but it illustrates the contrast between the incremental and the transformational scale. And the reality is that for most businesses in our sector, we're going to have to be doing one and two. Given that today is about innovation and indeed is, is focused on the application of innovation, 
I'd like to spend the next few minutes focusing on what Beef and Lamb is doing in this space, and specifically in the area of extension. Firstly, let me throw a few stats to set the scene. We have roughly 12,500 commercial sheep and beef farmers. Last year, uh, 15,500 attended beef and lamb events. 5,900 of those were unique individuals. In other words, on average, the farmers that attended attended our events 2.6 times, or 2.6 events. This leaves another 6,600 that we're not co connecting directly with. Business 101 says that where possible, you should have a direct relationship with your customers. And our aim at Beef and Lamb New Zealand is to get as close to those 12,500 farmers direct as possible. Before we put on another 100 events to capture them, you and I both know that the farming year is already lousy with events and there's just no room for more. Now here's a few other confounding stats. The primary ITO says that 30% of farmers have literacy issues to varying degrees. 20% of our farmers are introverts, so you may not exactly be leaping the fence to join another couple of hundred farmers at a field day. But before you think I'm running down farmers for their educational and personality flaws, take a look at the New Zealand population stats. Literary, lit, literacy, see so there you go, that's a good example of it. <laughs> literacy, um, New Zealand suggests that 40% of New Zealanders don't have the literary literacy skills they need for home, work and life. Introversion is part of the normal personality trait that is found in a third to 50% of our population. So deal with it. We also know from the Red Meat Profit Partnership work that we've got a mix of attitudes and approaches to the uptake and application of new ideas. In no particular order, we've got 22% uh, of primary pace setters, 23% of fast followers, 19% cautious conservatives, uh, 19% confident captains, and 17% seasoned grafters. I suggest you get the report to know what you are. So where am I getting to with all of this? Well, it's pretty simple, really. We've got all sorts of personalities and approaches to in innovation in our farming community, and whether we're providing products or services to farmers, a fair degree of our success will be tied up with a deeper understanding of who we're dealing with and their preferences. So what is Beef and Lamb New Zealand doing uh, strategically and tactically to address these challenges? Strategically, we're taking a design-led approach. Some of you may be familiar with uh, New Zealand Trade and Enterprises Better by Design methodology. Well, that's what we're applying in, in our business. It's about, it's how we go about developing strategy products and services. And I think Craig Adams from New Zealand Merino Company today has already referred to this um, concept already. At its core, the design-led approach is about putting the farmer at the centre and developing a deep understanding of the issues needs and wants and co-designing with farmers to rapidly develop and test prototype solutions to a problem or an opportunity for that matter. There's also a real bias to action. Get to the point of trying something and if it's going to fail, fail fast and move on. The expansion and engagement of the Farmer Council and the, and the coining of the phrase by farmers for farmers is a recognition of this change in approach and it's delivering better results for farmers. From a tactical perspective, I want to illustrate five initiatives that are catering for the diverse audiences um, and improving our contact with farmers. The first is the Lucerne Tech Service. Increasingly, text is becoming the marketing tool of choice. The stats tell us that 98% of texts will be opened, will be opened and 90% within three minutes. While by contrast, a good email open rate is 30%, 50% of which will occur within six hours and 80% within 48 hours. Excuse me, in fact, I've just got a text. It's coming in now. Uh, it's from Michael Smith, Red Meat Profit Partnership. 
Just thanking me for giving a plug for the Red Meat Profit Partnership. No problem, Michael. So listen, the Lucerne Tech Service was, uh, is, is run by Derek Moot out of Lincoln University. And it's all about delivering timely technical info to help farmers better manage their Lucerne. It's got 794 subscribers, 69% of them are farmers. And, and here's a really interesting stat. 47% of those farmers had not engaged before in any of other beef and lamb New Zealand activities. So again, we're using a different approach to connect with more people. Another, another technology that we're using is a good old conference call. So 120 farmers so far have been involved in, in conference calls with subject matter around internal parasites, uh, feed quality, uh, lamb rearing. And again, an interesting stat here is that 40% of these farmers haven't participated in any other beef and lamb activity to date. These, um, these talks or these conference calls are now available as podcasts on our website, so go and have a look. Engaging the women in our farming businesses is another really important um, aspect of what we're doing. And Beef and Lamb New Zealand is a strategic partner with the Agri Women's Development Trust. And um, as, the, uh, as the little uh, round circle at the top suggests there, they've had over a thousand graduates since 2010. So what is this all about? It's about engaging and empowering women to enable a full contribution to the farm business. The research evidence tells us that uh, there is better application of innovation where women are fully engaged and knowledgeable about the farming business. Um, drones for technology transfer. At this year's Beef and Lamb New Zealand AGM, we were able to complete four farm on farm field days in four hours. We only set foot on one of those farms though. The other three were high quality drone footage on farm combined with farmer interviews. Can, um, can I switch this on or do I need somebody up there to switch it on for me? Oh, great. Yeah, we farm a Tangaroa um, on the Northern Wai River, which is uh, about, uh, we're about 20 minutes from Dale driving and about 40 minutes from Conray. So, you know, kind of draw a straight line between Conray and Dale, but that's about where we are. Uh, the farm itself is 446 hectares, um, just typical northern broken rolling hill country I guess. A little bit of flat, not a lot, but a little bit. And we farm about 1300 ewes plus replacements, we winter 1300 ewes plus replacements, and about 600 cattle. So the drone footage allowed all of the key details of the farm to be seen. The contour, the aspect, the pasture cover and quality, animal subdivision, etc. And the farmer interview conducted in a relaxed and com comfortable atmosphere allowed quality information to be delivered. Online, this, now, this information is now available to all Beef and Lamb customers. Um, you can see those videos on our YouTube channel. So lastly, Facebook. Two million Kiwis plus use Facebook every day and farming families are into it. An example of the power of this tool uh, incurred in Gisborne recently, and forgive me if the, for those Gisborneites if I've got this totally, it sounds quite good, so we'll run with it. Um, where, where a woman was struggling with beef and lamb's yard weaning technique for calves. So she posted on Facebook. Within two hours, someone had replied with a solution and the job was fixed. A second example is the Agribusiness Women's Network, who, which was struggling to fill one of its workshops down south. Within a day of posting an alert on Facebook, the, the, the workshop was way oversubscribed. Facebook is potentially a very powerful channel, not only for beef and lamb to deliver through, but for rural families to drive their own homegrown innovation and to share it in a timely manner. If you're not actively using Facebook to connect with farmers, then you should be. So where to from here uh, for beef and lamb New Zealand and its farmer facing activities? By farmers, for farmers will continue to be at the heart of what we're doing. We will continue with the farmer-centred design-led approach and we are rapidly evolving to a farmer plus partner planning and prototyping approach right across our business. A deeper understanding of our farmers will underpin our activities. Can I compliment the Red Meat Profit Partnership for the 
great farmer segmentation work that they have done with UMR and Mark Elliott and his team. I encourage all of you to get hold of the report and have a good read through it. I'm sure I'll get another text from Michael in a minute saying thanks for the plug. I probably won't open this one. We'll continue to work hard on defining the value proposition for new ideas and technologies with farmers. And we're going to put more effort into the practical methods by which we can work with farmers to measure and quantify the real benefit of applying uh, beef and lamb facilitated knowledge and technologies. The examples today that have illustrated are more incremental than transformational. And the challenge for our industry and organisation is that we need more transformational innovations. I believe there is a real challenge to look outside our industry for ideas, tools, technologies and approaches used by the most innovative and successful companies and industries worldwide. It needs to, to supplement our own great internal minds. I welcome your ideas and feedback for today and I look forward to working with you to find real transformational approaches to identifying and applying world-beating uh, innovation to our industry. Our aim, which remains the same, is for, the, for beef and lamb and for our industry is to have a profitable and confident industry. Thank you.